Hi everyone, so I have wanted to do this for a little bit, but I was like, how am I possibly gonna film this? And I found a way. Um, I'm not gonna show you what you're on, but you're on a stack of books right now on my couch um, because I wanted to give a tour of my A to Z little shelf decoration thing here. So I have these like, I guess bookends that are letters A to Z. When I first started decorating them like this, I would do like color schemes. So I think the first one I ever did was white and pink. And I've posted a picture on Instagram of this. And then I also did a white and yellow. And this one is white and blue. And it's been this way for a long time, like since the summer, just cause I haven't had the motivation to change it up. So these are all of my white and blue books. I mean, not all of them, but um, I do kind of like the way it looks. It's not like a perfect, you know, pattern, but it's, it's still fun. And I really like to have books displayed like this. I wanted to just share these books because I often forget about them because they're up here and they're not on my main shelves. Like I don't see them. And so for videos, sometimes I forget to show them, but you will notice that there are some books that I've read recently because if I read a book that I own and it has any part of blue on the spine, I will add it to this A to Z because I just want to see how big I can get it, I guess. Um, yeah, and I just thought it would be fun to share these books. So here we go. I'm gonna start on the A side and work my way to the Z side. Um, so number one is Wild Montana Skies by Susan May Warren. I read this book in May and I really enjoyed it. I probably won't go into what these books are about, but either way, um, there's a little bit of like kind of greenish blue on the spine and I, I still thought it matched the letters pretty well. So that is the first book. I'm gonna start stacking them here, I guess. My oven's ready. <laughs> okay, and then I've got That Sounds Fun by Annie F. Downs. This is just the white spine, but um, it matches, whoops, matches really well. I feel like I'm just like, you know, playing hide and seek or something. <laughs> or what's it called? Peekaboo, there you go. Okay, then I also have Sinners in the Hands of a Loving God by Brian Zand. I read this earlier this year and it sparked a lot of good discussion. I really enjoyed it. I've got The Shack by William Paul Young. That's like a dark blue spine. And then Four by Veronica Roth. I really like this novella collection. The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. I love this book. It really encouraged my faith when I first read it. It has a ton of like solid evidence for why believing in Jesus as God and human makes sense. So I really like that. Okay, this book I have not read. It's called What Are the Odds um, by Mike Lindell. I showed this in a book haul a little bit ago. And this guy, I think, is the CEO of, like, a really famous pillow company or something in the States. And my dad bought me his little autobiography, I guess. So I've not read it yet. I don't know if I ever will, but it's blue, so it's perfect. <laughs> then I've got The Mountain Between Us by Charles Martin. I really like this book. This is the first book I read by him. And I was very impressed because it just was so deep, like, the way that he explored life and just different experiences in life it was really cool and so I was definitely intrigued and then ever since then I've been loving every book that I've read by him then I've got the indigo spell by Rochelle Mead this is book three in the bloodlines series this used to be my favorite series of all time um, it's about vampires that live in a human world um, but it also follows alchemists and that part wasn't great you know like it's about casting spells and stuff but it was pretty innocent in my opinion and it was really just like the characters relationships that I really enjoyed um, and then a little bit of the politics were really interesting too so anyways it the spine matches so that's why it's here but I do really like this series still then I've got love that lasts by Jefferson and Alyssa Beth Key um, it's been a while since I've read this but I do remember thinking that I liked how real they were um, and they talked about like real issues that come up in a relationship. So I thought it was pretty useful. Um, I'm still single, so some things weren't very applicable, but it's still good to like get that wisdom before you get into a relationship too. Oh, we are officially going to take over here. I might just start putting them back, I think. It's probably the smartest move. Did it. <laughs> okay. Okay, we were here. The Courage to Teach by Parker J. Palmer. Um, this book was recommended to me in my education program. 
Um, and I think it's an excellent book to read if you want to be a teacher. He talks about so many different things and like the heart behind why you become a teacher and um, honestly I should probably reread this just to remember why I like teaching <laughs> because sometimes it's it's easy to forget when you get so stressed out and burnt out and all the things but I remember loving this um, definitely a good book if you want to be a teacher I think parents should read this too honestly because it just really shows everything that goes into being a teacher and like the emotional weight of it it's it's like actually pretty intense so it's good to remember all right then I've got War Cross by Murray Lou a favorite and I really like the spine it's so easy to match with because it has every color um, but it's mostly white so it fits perfectly with this okay then I've got The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier this is book two to the little duology and it's been a while since I've read it and I did plan to reread it this year but um, there's just something that keeps me from picking them up um, but this cover is gorgeous and I love the blue color so it fits perfectly up here then I've got You Are the Girl for the Job by Jess Connolly. This is a nonfiction that I read last year and I really enjoyed it. It's, it wasn't just some like self-motivating, like, oh, you're awesome, you can do it. Like, I feel like the the spiritual aspect of this book was actually really solid and I got, I got a lot from it. So I would recommend this book actually. Then there's The Elephant in the Gym by Jillian Gerzen. Um, this is a Canadian author. I think she's actually from British Columbia too and she wrote about health and fitness in this book and why it's so important but also why it's so difficult and it was just like a really motivating book and it's beautiful so i'm happy that i own it then i have king's cage by victoria aviard um this is book three to the red queen series and i think this is my favorite in the whole series i've only read the series through once but i would love to read it again but yeah this book is super intense but I really enjoyed it. It's a quick read. And this copy actually was gifted to me by a subscriber um, over a year ago now. And I'm really appreciative. I wanted to own the whole series. So I do own the whole series now. Actually, no, I don't. I'm, I'm missing book two, but that's fine. I'm glad I have this book because it's my favorite one. Okay, and then The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. I've talked about this book a lot. I really enjoy it. And I just think the colors on the spine are really fun to play with on the shelf. Then Jesus Loves Me by Kelvin Miller. I love this book. This is a nonfiction, um, breaking down all of the verses of the song Jesus Loves Me. And it's so cute, but like really deep. And I really enjoyed it. So if you grew up singing Jesus Loves Me in Sunday school, this book will be so nostalgic for you. Then I have It's Not What You Think by Jefferson Bethke. Um, this was his second book that he came out with and I really enjoyed it. He definitely has some pretty like specific opinions, I guess, about Christianity and how to live. But I think the main thing is he's really like pushing back against legalism within Christianity. And I do appreciate that because it's so easy for me to get stuck into legalism. So it's been a long time since I've read this book, but these are all the tabs that I made as I was reading it. So I could look back and just read what I thought, but. Okay, speaking of Charles Martin, Unwritten by Charles Martin is probably my least favorite by him. I just found the, I guess the plot was pretty dull for me, even though it sounds interesting, but I just felt like the execution was just kind of slow. Maybe if I read it again, I would be more into it because this was probably only my third book by him that I ever read. Then we've got Watchers by Dean Koontz. This is the scariest book I've ever read. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's got a great blue and white spine. So yeah, this is a thriller for sure. And it has a lot of gore in it as well and some swear words. So, you know. Then we've got Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. Beautiful blue book. Okay, then Champion by Marie Lu. This is the third book to the Legend trilogy and I love it, it's really good. Um, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's kind of red, but it's also white, so it works. Okay, and then we've got The Final Six by Alexandra Muneer. Um, this is a YA sci-fi that I read the beginning of this year. Um, kind of forgettable, to be honest. I even read the sequel, and it's forgettable, so. <laughs> cool cover, though. Okay, this book, I like never talk about it, but I really like it. It's called All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remarque. Um, it's a French name, but I read this in high school and then I also read it in university. It is a story in the perspective of a soldier during World War I, um, and he's a French soldier um, at the front, and 
it's just like all of the trauma that he goes through and what it was actually like at the front and so it paints just such a clear picture of what it was like and it really helped me to sympathize with the soldiers because it's hard to like understand what would ever cause people to like want to support something like this but and then also how it weighs on your mental health it's just crazy so yeah i really like this book i'm so glad that i read it okay next is my life next door by huntley fitzpatrick i used to love this book now i probably wouldn't love it as much um but it does follow the daughter of a politician so i do kind of like that plot line but and the relationship is really cute the guy is like such a gentleman and a nice guy but the romance goes farther than i would be comfortable reading now so that's a little bit too bad for a ya but other than that like i think the story is really solid next is truth stained lies by terry blackstock um this is the first book in a little trilogy you follow a family and there's different kind of like mysteries and murders um throughout the books that are pretty exciting to follow and yeah, this was a funny book. I don't think it's the best that she's ever written, but it was definitely a fun ride. Um, I read them all last summer and it was just like, you know, something fun and easy to read. Plus they're all Christians, which is nice. And yeah, I would recommend it. Okay, this book is one that I forgot to add in my favorite YA books of all time video because The Book of Ivy by Amy Angel it's a dystopian and I think it's so clever and I feel like she could have written more in this world but she really like focused on characters rather than world building but the world building that was there was excellent so it follows kind of like the aftermath of like a devastation in the United States and you're in this community where there's kind of two sides like two main families that run the community and every other year they intermarry their kids so that no one family like has more power than the other um, and it's not weird if that made it sound weird like it's not you know incest or anything but anyways you follow um, the daughter of one side and the son of one side and they're betrothed and you follow them so and they have no choice but it's just the way it all plays out and their relationship and stuff was just so captivating and I really enjoyed it. I never hear anyone talk about these books but they're like really good. I would definitely recommend them if you see this book around. Then I have The Case for Faith by Lee Strobel. This book is excellent too. It talks about a lot of faith questions that people tend to have about like believing in God and you know just different things to do with faith and I think it's a great companion to The Case for Christ. I think it follows up really really well so I would definitely recommend this one if you like The Case for Christ. This one's just as good. Okay, then we've got Gods and Kings by Lynn Austin. This is the only series that I've read by Lynn Austin, but it's really good. It's biblical fiction. It follows kind of the stories in First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. It follows King Hezekiah mainly. And then his sons, um, King Manasseh, I think, his son? I don't know. Yeah, it's a pretty intense story. Like, you know, the Bible isn't a clean, happy place all the time, but I like that it brought those stories to life. And so now when I read the Bible, I can like picture it better. So anyways, um, definitely a exciting series to get into. Then we have, whoops. Oh, yeah. It's fine. I'll show that one next. <laughs> okay, so then we have My True Love Gave to Me. This is a, like a little compilation book of Christmas stories. And there's some in here that are so good. So that's why I keep it and why I continue to read them because there's some that are just the cutest thing I've ever read. There's a couple that like I would definitely cut out of here, but you know, just because of the type of romance that's in it or just like what it's about is kind of dumb. <laughs> but then there's some really cute ones. So that's kind of like with any short story collection. Ever since this one though, I haven't liked any of the other short story YA collections that have come out with like a bunch of well-known authors. And this is the only one that I actually like, so. Okay, and the book that fell was Safe Haven by Nicholas Sparks. This is also a really good Nicholas Sparks book. Um, it's probably my second favorite. Yeah, or maybe A Walk to Remember is, but I don't own A Walk to Remember, so it's not as easy. But anyways, yeah, I do enjoy this book. It gets pretty intense. There's some domestic violence in here that is really hard to read, but the movie is really good too. I'd recommend it. Okay, and then I have 316, The Numbers of Hope. So this is about John 3.16 in the Bible and Max Licato um, just talks about each 
word and just what the what the verse means um, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son it's a beautiful verse it's the I think it's the most popular verse of the Bible so yeah um, really good book okay Rift by Andrea Creamer is a random fantasy that I actually really enjoy <laughs> well back in the day I did there is a lot of magic in here so that is the thing that is kind of like not great but for some reason like it depends on the type of magic if there's magic that isn't I guess there's just a vibe I get of like oh this is like evil like I really should not read this um, but then there's some magic that just feels not as bad not as I don't know so anyways when I read this you know when I was 19 I thought it was fine I didn't see any issues with it if I read it now I might not like it as much but it's got a blue spine so that's why it's here <laughs> I really have to reach now um, okay so we've got the pursuit of holiness by Jerry Bridges I love this book I think it's so it's similar to A.W. Tozer I would say with um, the pursuit of God the pursuit of holiness is about the holiness of God and how we are drawn to it and the power of it and what it means for our identity and who we are it's really good um yeah really recommend this book oh and speaking of the pursuit of god by aw tozer um i read this for the first time last year and i loved it it just talks about how we are drawn to divinity and we actually need god um and we don't even realize like what we're seeking in life is god and it's a beautiful book so definitely recommend that one got the story this is the bible told in kind of like one continuous story but like in chapters um so there's no books but it kind of like tells you what it's referencing i really enjoyed this like it literally starts in genesis and goes to Revela revelation and it's using niv language so like there are word for word verses in here and there's i wouldn't say there's any language added there's no information added, but it's just told in a story way. Like if you told the story of creation to a kid or, you know, anyone, you wouldn't necessarily like just, you know, from your memory, you wouldn't necessarily read it word for word from the Bible. You would like make it work as a story. Does that make sense? But it's like, and I, I don't consider this the Bible, but almost you could. It's just, there's no chapters, no verses. It's just all, you know, paragraph style. I don't know. Um, it was good though. It definitely helped like get the whole Bible in me easier. Um, it's really just so that you can know what's in the Bible and then go read it for yourself and maybe understand it a bit better. Okay, Snake Root is another book in this uh, Andrea Creamer series. This is the last book. Um, this follows, you know, a character in this world. And I remember liking it. It's been a very long time since I've read it. So basically, the spine color is why it's here. And the last book is Prayer by Philip Yancey. I have not read this book, but my grandma highly recommends it. And he just talks about prayer. So I've got a lot of books about prayers, so I don't know when I'll ever get to this one, but it fits perfectly back there. It has a good spine, so it is here. So that is my little tour of my A to Z shelf. Um, it just like, so my basement has like this ledge going all the way around. So the books just sit on this ledge and it works. And I like to color coordinate it because that's kind of fun. Eventually I want to do red and then green. I think those are the two others that I haven't done. So we'll see when I get time to do that. Probably not till the summer. But thank you for watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them. And I guess I will list, you know what, no. I'm not gonna list the books in the description. Um, just pause the video whenever I hold up a book and you can get it that way. But thank you very much for watching this, you guys. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you next time.